Good morning. Look, the neighbor Christian Church, everybody's doing good. Everybody here, y'all say hello. Hello. Hello and hallelujah. Hello. Or you can just say ha halo. Either one. That's fine. Halo's working good, too. God, God is awesome. Y'all come on and have a good time today. The Lord's working, and we're going to trust Him to have a good, good service. Um, and, and also, we're going to talk about it later, but let's remember Little Walter. Uh, little Walter is... Uh, needing God to touch him, he's at Pittmore Hospital waiting on an operation for him. And he, the little fella just had a lot of stuff done to him over the last few months. And we know God's got him. I'll show you a picture of him in a minute. But he, he's, he's, he's tough. He's tough as a lighter knock. Because he comes from he comes from that tough stuff. And he, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the year that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Y'all stand up and say this with me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, O oh Lord. It got awesome. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and worship now. We got, we got an opportunity. You know what? I sat back and I was thinking about it today. And, and, and of course, you, uh, Russia's uh, uh, saber rattling and talking about who they're going to hit and World War III is going to be starting. And I thought about Ezekiel 38 and 39 and, and that's coming soon because that's either going to happen just before the rapture or just after the rapture. So that's all right here. It's getting ready to happen. And we need to just stand strong in God and don't let it distract us. Hear me? Don't let it distract you from worship because if God already God knew it was coming and He already told us ahead of time, then it's going to be okay. Amen. Next man said we're going to be okay. Okay, y'all ready to go? Y'all ready? Ready to rip their ship? Right now. 
when he finds a parking space, he may do surgery. <laughs> it got good all the time. Go ahead and put up with it there. Let's see. Where have I got the, uh, where have I got the, uh, there it is. There it is. There we go. Ready? Get your offer now. If you haven't already put it in, put it in, put it, uh, put it in your hand. If you have already put it in, of course, when you drop it up in the front, in, in the little brass, this little brass uh, pot up there, amen? Would y'all say this with me? If you don't have it, if you already put it in, just hold your hand up. Amen? Ready? I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. That's correct. You put the water back up there. Praise the Lord, saints. Does anybody have an outspoken request this morning? Remember my wife, she's got that COVID rebound on it, so she can't seem to shake it. But we know God can. We thank God for that. Ron Foxwell, he's, he's on our prayer list. Um, he's now in hospice care with, with stage four cancer. Anyone else this morning? Other than they have special needs, lost loved ones, let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that's said and done. Father, we ask that you continue to minister and bless each and every one of you this morning as they took time to come and gather and worship. Bless my name, Lord. Draw us closer to you, Father. Father, we also ask that you administer my name to each and every spoken and unspoken request in life, Lord. We just ask that your hand would reach down and strengthen and heal and, Father, move in the way that you see fit, Lord God, that brings glorification not only to us but to your name first and foremost. Father, we thank you very much for this day. Be with us in the remainder of this service today. And we walk in the new testimony that we've been in the presence of God. In Jesus' name, the church said. Let's all together raise your hands and say, Lord, we can give a little water to you right now. We know that you got his best interest in your heart. And when we can't see your hand, we're going to trust your heart. In the name of Jesus, touch his parents, lift them up. And with Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. Now, now back in the day. But now, now, until you get old, you can say now back in the day. Well, back in the day when I was first when I first got in church, and after I'd been in church for a while, I started getting started moving toward the ministry, and things were a little crazy. And there was this song that came out. And this song was always such an awesome, awesome song. Uh, one time I even thought it was written about me. It was. You'll see in a minute, see the little name? <laughs> but then I realized I've never been little, so it couldn't have been me. Okay. So, this song kept me getting through a lot of battles early on, and it's been on my mind a lot lately. And I don't, just out of nowhere, I know it was God out of nowhere. Just, I just started singing it one day, and so I looked at the words, <coughs> and I said, okay, we're going to do this one day. I really believe we're showing it to the Lord to do this. And today, it matches the sermon perfectly. So we're going to do it, and we're all going to sing it together. Now, most of y'all, if you even here are older than 30, <laughs> if you're right, anybody here older than 40, if you're older than 40, you may remember this song. And it really is. It's an awesome song. I'm not going to do the whole song. We're not going to do the whole song. We're just going to do the chorus. Uh, praise God. <laughs> we're just going to do the chorus. But we're going to, y'all want to sing it together. Ready? Ready? The battles of my
God is so awesome. We got all kinds of crazy mess going on in the world, but if you try to take it on yourself, you know, I was watching a, there's a, some kind of, uh, you sit down for a second, there's some kind of helpline they're advertising on television, and of course, they show one where the guy's lifting weights, and it's caught on his throat, and the guy sees him and walks around and goes, let me help you get this up. He says, no, I got it. <laughs> really? <laughs> He says, no man, you need some help. He says, no, you don't know me. You don't know my family. All right, it was the weights picked up off and started getting ready to choke to death. But today as I was getting ready to come here and I was filing up this, I was filing, filing up this, it was, <laughs> one of those commercials came on and the guy jumped out of the plane with his parachute. Yeah. And he pulls one cord and nothing happens, so he pulls the other cord and says, well, there's that. And on the way down, some up beside him said, look, hold my hand. I'll help you down. He says, no, I got this. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so, so again, in this last day, don't try to do anything without on your own. Make sure, number one, you got God. Number one, you got God. Amen. And number two, make sure you got some help. Somebody that can talk to you, you can talk to you, you can trust, that you have nothing else. Sometimes just talking makes things feel better. But know that we're, look, I think it was Martin Luther King said, we might not all came over here on the same ship, but we're definitely all in the same boat. That's right. So we're all in the same boat right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all need to pray for me because I got robbed Friday night. I got robbed at the fast fair up there in Washington, or whatever you call that place, to, to very quick, well, very quick though. Speedy, I got robbed. The police came up and asked me could I describe the, the guy that took my own money. And I said, yeah, I think it was Pump 10. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know. I, I, but a couple years ago, I spent $20, $25 to pull my car. And I, the other day, I spent $65 to pull my $20 car up while I fell out. Amen. So, 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 so just trust God in all of this because He's got us. Amen. He's got us. Ready? So we're going to surrender all to Jesus. Ready? Come on, let's go. On. Stand up. Ready? Oh.
dead. Say God's dead. You know, I said, no, I didn't. I said, number one, uh, uh, where's his body? Number two, who pronounced him dead? And number three, why was I not notified? Because I'm next to Ken. <laughs> God's alive! Oh, 
she, she is right. You're so pretty. You're gorgeous. I got ready. Well, I just put spray bottles up here somewhere. I lost some spray bottles, but it's all right. We'll do it this way. Are ready? Just put your hand on it. Ready? I'm going to pray for you, Zoe. <coughs> <laughs> Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you, Lord, for those others. We thank you, God, for touching her body. Lord, show your power and your anointing in the name of Jesus. And we trust you right now because we know you're doing something special. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 All right. All right. There's the spray bottle. <laughs> God's good. Oh, God. A middle-aged man wasn't feeling well, so he went to the doctor for a checkup. After a third examination, the doctor said, well, based on my examination, the best, th the best thing for you to do is to cut out all sweets, all fatty foods, give up alcohol, and stop smoking. The man thought for a while, he said, well, to be honest with you, doc, I don't deserve the best. <laughs> <laughs> What's the second best? <laughs> Amen. Well, a lot of people are living on the second best. We don't want to do that. Amen. We live on the best. So we're going to talk just a little while. This is part one uh, because I want to stop and, 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 and really take our time with this. This is part one. And uh, I might be going in this direction, in this direction for a while because of all the, the craziness that's going on in our country right now. Uh, it, it, it boggles my mind at, at how polarized our nation is and how much problems it's got. No matter which way anything goes, there's problems. And, 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 and God's got to take control. Because if he doesn't take control, we're sunk. Amen? We're just sunk. God's got to do something. Amen? So get your Bible. You don't have to. You, matter of fact, I'm just going to put it up here for you. So you don't have to even get your Bible out there. Everybody stay in. Get your Bible if you want to. We're going to talk about dealing with something very powerful right now. <laughs> That's burnout. Burnout is very real. Burnout is a very strong thing in this world right now. And burnout affects or can affect everyone. But once burnout affects one person in your family, one person, y'all say one person. When burnout affects one person in your family, it affects the whole family. Amen? So you got to think about this now. When burnout affects one, it affects all. Same way on your job, you got some people that you're working close with. Uh, one person being burnout can make it hard on everybody else. And the person that really gets the worst part of it uh, in the burnout is, is that person themselves. But a lot of times, they don't want to admit it, or they think they can keep on going. And I can promise you that there comes a time when you just can't keep on going. Amen? Amen. So here it is, right here. Ready? I'll put it in there for you. You can look in your Bible and look up here. Uh, what sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting, the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, Fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith of them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Just put your hands this way. Father, we thank you, God, for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, God, that you are alive and well on the throne, Father. And Lord, we can look around. And turn on the television and every news station. When you see all this crazy stuff that's going on, Lord, we know that a lot of this has to deal with burnout. And I ask you right now, Lord, to, to help this world. But not only to help this world, let's bring it down a little closer. Then, Lord, help our world, our own personal world. Lord, if we're the one that's burned out, help us learn to admit it and ask you for help. And if we're not the one that has to burn out, help us to help the ones that do before we burn out trying to help them. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch the anoint in such a way that we'll know, God, that you showed up and showed off. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, now, I want to, I want to, again, this is, this is very powerful. And, you know, I, I, 
I think you came actually, you know, with us trying to take care of my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and then my father-in-law died, and, and now we're trying to take care of mother-in-law, but things seem like everything's dragging its feet. We thought we got help, we had some help, then we lost the help, and, you know, the things were going to be taken care of, until set back and wait, we got this, they didn't have this, and now we're back to square one again, and we're waiting for God to move, and all that, <clears throat> and, and, and I can see uh, how easy people can get burnt out. Even when you're trying to do the best you can possibly do and help somebody else, it's very easy to get burnt out. And so uh, I, I like this version, uh, very powerful. Uh, the message says, Why would you ever complain, O Jacob, or whine, Israel, saying, God has lost track of me? He doesn't care what happens to me. Has anybody ever said that? You don't have to raise your hand. Nobody's taking names. But have you ever said that? God, do you even see where I'm at? Do you even care? Hey, hey, can, 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 if you really see me, God, are you really going to help me? Are you going to do something to, to help? You know, you know. Uh, sometimes I, I know this sounds kind of bad when you don't tell somebody who's trying to stand by you. Don't just stand there and do something. Sometimes you want to say, God, don't just stand there and do something. And he's going, you got to let me do it my way and in my time. You say, uh, don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's the creator of all you can see and imagine. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't pause to catch his breath. He knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired. He gives fresh strength to dropouts. For even the young people get do tired and drop out. And young folks in their prime stumble and fall. But they that wait upon the Lord uh, gets fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. So now, the problem of this age, the number one problem, is not whether you're Democrat or Republican, it's not whether you're conservative or whether you're liberal, that's not the number one problem of this age. The number one problem of this age is, is burnout. Let me put that again, is burnout. Amen? See, many, many are burnt out, meaning they got nothing left to give. Some are burned up, they're just so consumed, they think it's gone. And then there's some that are burning through. They're hurting. But the bottom line in all this, everybody's burning the candle at both ends. We're trying to help ourselves. We're trying to help others. We're trying to do the best that we can to get through. But the bottom line is, is that our strength, if we're not careful, has been zapped. And you got to watch it. You know, I, I was reading, you know, because of all these shootings, you know, and, and all this stuff that's going on around us, you know, uh, as I began looking, I did some research, and this may not be the most accurate of all researches, but this is a reputable place where I got this. But the United States, the world itself, and especially the United States, is having a, a mental health crisis. It's mental health. We want to blame guns. We want to blame. It's kind of like if a man gets a DWI, you want to blame the car. You ever got any of y'all want to blame the car? What's the car's fault? I shouldn't have been driving the Ford. Whoa. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, yeah, or, 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 or you drown and say, what's the fool's fault? No, 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 no. So you can say all day long it's the gun's fault. It's not the gun's fault. It's, it's people have a mental health crisis. Yes, we need to find a way to do better with our guns. Yes, we do. We need to take a better, better survey and find out who's capable and who's not and all that. But at the same time, remember, it's not the gun's fault. It's a mental health problem. Right. And people are burnt out. They can't take it anymore. I remember as a high schooler, back in the day when we drove horses to school. <laughs> and remember being in the FFA, I was in the FFA, and we did something called initiation. And they had initiated me uh, with the, uh, 10 guys held me down, pulled me up in the air and gave me a pink belly. My belly was black and blue for a month because they didn't give me a little bitty pink belly. They, they hit hard. I thought they used a bag. Well, a friend of mine who was already on the, on the edge, they pulled him down and I can't remember if they did that to him or threw him in a bucket that was on, uh, a 55 gun drum that was on fire or something, you know, and when he finally got up, he got so mad. I remember this. I was watching. He drove. He walked to the parking lot. He, 
And when he got in the parking lot, he took it and drove right back up to school and went in the back of his trunk and opened it up and grabbed a rifle. And that was back in 78. 78. They had to calm him down because he was going to shoot somebody. Because he was already a nurse on the edge. He was having problems at home. And then these guys hold him down. He wasn't expecting they beat him, whatever he did. But I remember that this day. The look of fear and terror on everybody, especially him when he pulled in, got out of his car and reached in the truck and grabbed a shot or a, a, a gun. Okay, right. So, so, so I did a little statistic thing here. You know, in the USA alone, just the USA alone, since January, okay? And again, you might find statistics different anywhere, but I, these I checked on two different sites, and so these are the ones that came up. What's called a mass shooting is when four or more people are hurt or killed. That's called a mass shooting. Four or more people are hurt or killed. Now, in the United States, we average one a day since January. We've averaged one a day. You don't see them all over on the TV, but we've averaged one a day since January. And uh, so there's not been a single week that there hasn't been at least, at least four plus. That was the average, but there hasn't been a single week since January that hasn't been four plus mass shootings. Right now, the number for mass shootings, uh, some say it's between 230 and 250, depending on where you get your research at. But 250 people have been injured or killed in mass shootings since January in the United States. In the United States. And so they said, well, it's just the age that we live in. Okay, I, 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 okay, I agree with that. Watch this. 2014, 91 people died in mass shootings in the United States at this time in June. 2015, 116 died. In the year 2016, 121 died. In 2017, 141 died. 2018, 106. 2019, 147. 2020, 155. 2021, 240. 2022, depending on where you look at it, is 232 confirmed deaths from mass shootings in the United States. So we watch TV and hear about one every now and then. Remember, the average is there's one a day somewhere. And that's at least four people getting shot and or killed. All right. The problem is a mental health problem. Now you go to the gas station and people start seeing their gas. And I, you know, like I said, my gas one time was like $25 to fill my gas tank up, $20, $25. And now it was $65 the other day. And I, and, and I, and I went, really? And I turned around and the guy had a big SUV and said, be glad, Bubba. I was telling one of the people at a family gathering yesterday, I said, I can't believe I paid $65. And they said, well, mine cost me 100 and something to fill up. His truck. And I went, I'm glad I don't have that truck. And when you start talking about people get mad. You start talking about the grocery store. People get mad. I went to go get Little Caesar's Pizza. It would be $5 per pizza. It went to five fifty. I said, well, I can understand that. But yesterday it's $6. It just keeps going up, up, up. The Dollar Tree went to a dollar twenty-five. Now they're gone. Now they've got a five dollar out, five dollar, three dollar. Wow! Because you can't keep up with what's going on around us, and people are losing their mind. They're losing their cool because now they're trying to decide what kind of food am I going to have to eat to make it stretch through the week. What kind of work am I supposed to do? Because I've got to make sure I got money to get gas to where I'm going. And then you got your kids needing something every time they turn around, and people are burnt out. I found out lately the way I've been counseling people, and, and it's just been it's just been amazing to me the burnout, the burnout, the burnout. And, and now I tell them sometimes like I don't have time to answer all your questions right now. Here's my phone number. Text me. And I'll, I'll text you back. We'll do text therapy. And there was four people yesterday 
texting me, want to know how to handle the pressure. People are burning out. And what makes it worse is we're leaving God out of the equation. Amen. When you leave God out of the equation, it gets worse and worse and worse. What happens is, is <clears throat> first, uh, frustration. Can't do a thing about it. Then there's disappointment because there never seems to be any change. Then depression because you feel helpless. Then there's doubt because now you're hopeless and, and nothing will ever change. But the bottom line is people have or having faith breakdowns. And there have been some people I go say, well, you just got to trust God in this and look at his word. And they go, don't bring me that spiritual super duper whopper whooper stuff. So excuse me. And, and one of the people running for, running for their office, I read it last night, I couldn't believe it. The way they got put in office is because they said I was raised in a good Christian environment, a good Christian home, I got good Christian standards, and, and here they are. They got, they got elected to do what they're gonna do, and now it's time for to, to another election. And with all this Roe versus Wade stuff, the, the person actually, I, I read it, I'm not gonna say who it was, but the person said, I discovered that God's got nothing to do with it. Wow, really? And the big word is we've evolved. We've evolved. We've evolved. And while everybody's evolving, people are crushing under the pressure and they're burnout. So here it is. 27 again. I want to read it one more time. Read it from the message here. Why would you complain, O Jacob, from wine? Israel saying, Has God lost track of me? Doesn't he care what happens to me? Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening to me, God? Wow. It's just everywhere. There's nowhere that you can go to find any relief from this. And so, as I was looking at this, and as I was reading it, I broke it down. Just 27. We we're going to stay on 27 today, and I can keep you long, and then we're going to go to other ones next week. The reactions, here, watch this. Here's the reactions when you have a faith breakdown. Now, now, if you're in here today and you're, you're suffering burnout, I want to find out also, are you, is your burnout, part of your burnout is because you're having a faith breakdown? Here it is. First, you react. Here's your problems. You, you can't do a thing about it. There's nothing you can do. You're sitting back trying to, you just got to trust God in all this. And you go, look, you, it, this says, then the Bible says, well, what do you say? Or why did you say, Jacob? Or, or the message says, why would you ever complain? The NIV says, why do you complain, Jacob? Say and complain. Pressure build up and you got to have some release. That's why people complain. And if people keep complaining about the same thing over and over and over again, you know what that means? They haven't got any justification. They don't have any answers to what they've been asking. If somebody keeps asking you the same thing over and over again, and you're telling them something, but they keep asking the same thing, you know what that means? That you've given an answer, but you haven't given the correct answer. To them. You may give the correct answer to the problem, but you haven't touched the them yet. That's why they keep asking. And so, yet that's God for wisdom to how to make this to where you got you know the answer and you can tell them tell them about it. So look, and then there's the reasoning. My way is hidden from the Lord. He can't even see this. It's beyond him. You see, when that happens, Satan has a very powerful advantage over you. When you think God can't see you anymore, He's not watching. He says, "Oh Jacob, uh, 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 why are you complaining, on Jacob, and why in Israel?" Uh, that God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. God cares what happens to you. He cares so much that he sent his son to die for you. Not only that, but watch this. Watch. He already told you what was coming down the pipe. He told us this was going to happen. He told us so that we don't have to be afraid when all this happens. He told us so we can be prepared. He told us so we can stand up strong and keep our faith. And I, you, know, you know what? <laughs> Yes, things have gone crazy, but I'm still going to trust my God. 
Amen. Yes, things in life, people have lost their ever loving mind. I'm still going to trust my God. God has never, never let us down. No, he never let us down. He already told us this was going to happen. So, <coughs> you know, he's not the God that says, I told you so. But you know what? If you want to take a tell you, I told you so. I told you it's going to happen. So then, then there's the resolve. Because my calls has been disregarded from my God. The NIV says that. It says, why do you pay us my way? It's hidden from the Lord. My calls is disregarded from my God. Uh, uh, now, watch this. He doesn't see it. He doesn't care. He just has just thrown it and me to the side. I promise you God hasn't thrown you to the side. He's watching you. If his eyes are on the sparrow, he's been to every sparrow since the beginning of time. He's been to every sparrow's funeral. And because he's been to every sparrow's funeral, and he says, look at these sparrows. I've been to all their funerals. <coughs> and he said, I've been there. I've been there watching them, and they're just worth two sin. He said, aren't you much more, much more worth than those sparrows? I watch and I see. You know, something by the grace of God, we're not consumed now. And the reason you're still here is because God wants to use you to show somebody else that we can make it through this. But we make it through it with our faith in God and believing that God is going to do what He said He was going to do. So, 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 so here are some responses. And, and believe me, I hear them all the time. I see them all the time. You know, uh, first thing, people run. They, they can't get enough distance between them and their problem. But the problem is, no matter where you go, guess what? You're still going to be there. Run all you want. You're still going to be there when you get there. Amen? Look, Psalm, Psalm 51 or Psalm 55 and 6 says, So I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Nah. Nah. You know, the dove, the dove hides. When the dove thinks that there's any kind of trouble, the dove will try to find a place to hide and burrow down in because it won't fly. But you know, I like when I ride by the fish farm on the way up here. Things are looking bad. And I see the, I don't see any other birds out, but I see the eagle flying around. I say, yeah, we got bad weather coming. And, and, and uh, D.C. and Dan said, why, Daddy? I said, because oh, where's all the other birds? So we don't see them. I said, what's up there flying around? They said, the eagles. I said, yeah, because see, all the other birds are flying in the storm. The eagle flies above the storm. That's why you see the eagle when you don't see anybody else. So, so, so run. And then the next one is just to deny. You know, you avoid the problem altogether. And, and when you avoid your problem altogether, that just gives your problem more power. Amen? Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yes, we've got a problem in this world today. We've got a problem in this nation today. We've got a problem uh, in the, in, in this, even in the local areas. We've got a problem today. We've got all kinds of problems. I'm going to be taking care of some of them tomorrow when I go to B5. And I get to hear some things that honestly will blow your mind when you hear some of the things you know, that I hear. And, 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 and it's not just once or twice. all the time. You hear these things all the time. All the time. And then can you pray for me? Yes, I can pray for you. Well, what do I do? And so we start talking about what we got to do and how we get through this thing. You know, uh, uh, last week there was a guy there and, and uh, I was uh, going to do another entirely different study. And the Lord spoke to me on Sunday night and said, I want you to go back. Go back, just as clear as a bell. Go back to forgiving yourself. And so that's what I did. I got it, forgiving yourself. And I sat down and I said, fellas, I was going to talk about something else because y'all been asking the other subjects. But the Lord spoke to me last night. And I said, we talking to you about forgiving yourself. And immediately you'd have thought that I had sat in the mall with a whipped fish. Their eyes got big and they put their head down. I said, uh huh. You're right, God. And one guy who would never even talk to me said, can I go in the box and talk to you after we get through? Can I talk to you in the box? And I walked in the box with him and he said, dude, 
He said, I've been here all day or for over a week now. I've been beating myself up, beating myself up. He said, I just wish I knew how to forgive myself. He says, you walk in and say, we're going to talk about forgiving ourselves. He said, whoa. I said, because God's watching. That's not my idea. I was going to preach on something a whole lot different today. That when God was watching and God heard your prayers and God's letting you know that he's not just leaving you here to take care of yourself. He's there even though you don't see him. Amen? So you can run from your problems. You can deny your problems. And here's the biggie. I mean, this is a big one nowadays. If it ever come up, come on, buddy. You got her. There it is. Just give up. All your fight's gone. And you just lose your appetite for victory. Have you lost your appetite for victory? Think about that before you say a word. Before you even raise your hand or whatever. Have you lost your appetite for victory. How do you know you lost your appetite for victory? Here it goes. Watch this. Well, what it is is what it is. It don't matter anyway. I'm just here. I'm pulling in. Those people, when you say that, examine yourself because you're losing your appetite for victory. Galatians, uh, I got three different verses I want to read to you. Galatians 6 and 9. The New Living Translation says, So don't get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. Galatians 6 and 9, the message says, so let's not allow ourselves to get, so get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. And the Amplified Version says, And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage in faint. So when it says, Do not grow weary and well doing, what it says is, don't allow yourself to be burned out. Now, I'm just going to quickly, because I'm getting ready to close. We'll quickly just give you a little something, uh, an appetizer, because next week's going to be, we're going to dig down. This is just a, this is actually was just the intro. Amen. Next week, we're going to, this, this was setting the table. Next week, we got the meat coming. If you smell, the grill's cooking right now. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Not the rock, the rock. All right. What do I do? Well, how do I handle this right now? I don't want a band-aid. Here it is. Ready? You're ready. Number one, recognize that your flame is quickly becoming an emperor. Well, it is what it is. Let's just flow with the punches. I didn't expect to win anyway. Well, I just prepare for the worst and expect the worst. And if God does better, then okay. Your flame is flickering. And it's becoming an emperor. So recognize this. Be able to tell God, okay, God. All right, I've had it. I've had it up to here. I really, I need to, watch this. I said that before to God a many times. God, I've had it. And then he says, then why are you still behind the wheel? Why do you keep insisting on driving if you don't know how to get there? Remember one time we were going to Tennessee. And, uh, and, and, and we were driving up in Tennessee. And, 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 and Linda said, I think you're lost. I said, I saw sped up. She said, I still think we're lost. I sped even faster. And she said, do you hear me? We're lost. I said, yeah, but we're making good time. How many in here... Not sure what's going on, but you just keep speeding up thinking you'll get there. You got to know where you're going. So, recognize that the flame is becoming an ember. 
Alright? And when you recognize this, no longer you say, hey, I got this, because that's a, that is a falsehood. I don't. Then you have to remember that when I don't have it, God does. You see, a lot of times if we're not careful, as long as God has blessed us, we're having a good time. Thank you for the blessing, God. Thank you for the blessing, God. Thank you for the blessing, God. And then things get rough. And we forget the same God that's blessed us is the same God that's going to protect us and lead us and guide us. And so, you got to remember, God's in control. So, so, I want to stop the car, get out, and get in the back seat and let God drive. I get aggravated. Look, I know y'all might, if any of y'all got this on your car, please forgive me. If you ride around this on the car, God is my co pilot. Bless you. If I have one of my cars, I'm going to say, God is my pilot. I don't need to be my co pilot. He do not <laughs> pilot the co pilot. Pilot the co pilot. We're flying to 7,000 feet. What do we do now? Remember, God's in control. And then relief. He wants you to give it to him. And sometimes he allows things to come your way just in the order that you can give it to him. And if you've been a, if you've been being blessed, 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 and now all of a sudden you're stressed, 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 maybe it's because the blesser has seen that you've got your eyes off the blesser and got your eyes on the blessed scene. And so God says, okay, you need a focus shift. You need to see what's going on. Get your eyes off the blessed scene and get your eyes back on the blesser. And you'll find this stress getting less. That almost right. Here it is. I love this. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. And I'll show you how to take a real rest. I was watching the Three Stooges. They're in the boat. They're duck hunting. Curly is going after well, one after the duck, and the duck flies down, and he says, and he shoots to hold the boat. Water's going up. Mo says, do something. So Curly shoots another hole in the boat. Now there's two things that water comes. He said, why did you do that? He said, I put another hole in so the water can leak out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you tired of carrying on your own? Try to do this for you. For you, not me. This week. Refuse to say it is what it is. Refuse it. Number two, no, refuse to say it is what it is. Number two, refuse to say, I'm just going for the ride anyway, it don't matter. I had a guy who was doing the funeral for his wife a couple months ago, and he said she was she would never make any decisions. She wanted him to make all decisions. And he said, he said, I want you to make some decisions. And so he said, where do you want to go with? It don't matter. And whatever you say, she said, it don't matter, it don't matter, it don't matter, it don't matter. What it is, it is. It don't matter. So he said, I'm gonna break her. So he got in the car and said, let's go ride. And he rode to Greenville and he said, You want to eat, you want to eat a steak house? She says, it don't matter. So he wrote the farm woman. He said, you want to eat here at, 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 at McDonald's? She says, it don't matter. So then he drove on to Wilson. And he says, you want to eat here at the steakhouse? She says, it don't matter. Then he got to Raleigh. He says, you want to eat here at the Japanese place? She says, it don't matter. So he starts riding the carriage. She says, hold. What's going on? He says, we're going to ride till it matters. Wow. Don't say it is what it is. Refuse to say it is what it is. Refuse to sign just alone for the ride. And the what everybody likes to use is I'm just pulling my eight. No, no. You, from here on out, get that hunger back. God, let me get my hunger back and my appetite back for victory. 
God, I know we got this. God, we're going to win this thing. God, you haven't forgotten me. We're going to win this thing. Yes, I'm tired. Yes, I'm worn out. Yes, I'm burnt out on all this mumbo jumbo and all the stuff going around me. But God, I know you got this and you got a plan. You already told us it was coming. It's not a surprise to you and I'm going to trust you. You see, your faith doesn't help you avoid problems. It helps you go through problems with stability. Yes, the place has gone crazy. You can't even talk anymore. Nobody, nobody the sides don't even want to talk anymore. They just want to argue with each other. When, if, you don't, if you don't agree like I everybody preaching tolerance, but then when you try to talk, nobody will talk. How can you solve anything like that? You can't. God's got this. And you've got to believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Brandon, come up here and play something softly, please. You turn on the news, if it's a 30 minute broadcast, you got 28 minutes of bad, 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 bad. In 30 seconds. Of something good happened. There's a reason to do that. Because bad news sells. Bad news gets attention. The first person with the baddest news gets the biggest ratings. <clears throat> and then they realize they're feeding into the burnout of this age. What everybody stand? Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, you see us and you know us. You know it's better than we know ourselves. And God, you see, Lord, those that have lost their appetite for victory. And they're just kind of cutting all the, the gear away and just letting them, they're just floating in the river, floating with the waves because they've lost that appetite for victory. God, I ask you today, Lord, to give them back that want to, that drive for victory, for you working in their lives very strongly right now. Yes, there's a lot of things to discourage us, and yes, there's a lot of things that can hurt us, and yes, there's a lot of things going on in this world that you've got to step in, God, because without you, we're sunk. But until that time we give it over to you, and I'm going to give mine over to you, and I'm going to hold on to your hand. Because those nail scarred hands have never let me down. Let's pray together. Lord, Lord, I give my life. I give my life. All over again. All over again. To you. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. For renewal. For renewal. In my life. My life. I thank you, God. Thank you. That we're not fighting by ourselves. I give every heartache. Give every, heartache every problem. Every problem everything, everything. That's burning me out to you right now and I trust you 100% help me to get back my hunger and my appetite for victory and I thank you for it today in the name of Jesus we pray and I'll give you the glory when this is all over in the name of Jesus we pray Amen God's got this. Can we go pray? Can have a prayer? Oh, come on up. We know, God, that you've got this. We trust you right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them. Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord, 
Father, this rebound, Lord, let it be gone. Lord, let it feel good again. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, all those people here in this church, Lord, that are sick, that are fighting COVID and fighting the effects of COVID, touch it right now. Doug's and, uh, I mean, Diggs and Doug and all those, Lord. Lord, uh, uh, touch Lord Jeanette and her family, Lord. Father, touch Patty. Lord, you've got this. We trust you right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for what you're doing. And we know, God, that you're stronger than anything. COVID is the little C. Your son Christ is the big C. And we trust yes. the big C over the little C any day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you for it. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Victory, 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 victory. Y'all ready? Glory. Glory. Come on, somebody say glory. Help. Get look, 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 ready? God? God. Help me. Help me. Get back. Get back. My appetite. My appetite. For victory. For victory. Strike the words. Come on, strike the words. Strike the words. It is what it is. It is. Out, of Out of my mouth. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we pray. Amen. Amen. God's good. God is so, so good. Amen. Lord, just Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in this your house today. Lord, as we go through this next week, give us the courage to ask for victory. Give us the courage to accept it when you are. Be with us in everything we do and carry us when we can no longer walk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.